Welcome to a Legendarium special about the mutiny on the HMS Hermione in 1797. In this episode, we will talk about one of the bloodiest mutinies in the history of the Royal Navy staged against one of its worst captains. The Royal Navy commissioned the HMS Hermione, a 32-gun frigate, in 1782. She served in the Caribbean and saw a battle during the start of the French Revolutionary Wars. Captain Hugh Pigot became captain of the HMS Hermione in 1797. Before he took this post, he served as the captain of the ironically named HMS Success at age 24. Under his watch, the Success rammed into another British ship, but since Pigot was an admiral's son, the incident resulted in no punishment. However, Pigot also ordered 85 floggings over nine months, affecting half the crew, and two men died from their injuries. During the 18th century, flogging served as the typical punishment for crimes at sea. Burley mates used the infamous Cat O' Nine Tails, nine ropes held together with a handle that could reduce a man's back to a raw and bloody mess. The law restricted captains to only 12 lashes unless they requested a court-martial. Of course, Captain Pigot delighted in doling out this punishment, ignoring the law, and lavishing favor upon his favorites. Captain Pigot continued to do so after taking command of the HMS Hermione at the age of 27. The Hermione set sail from Cape Nicholas Molay on the eastern end of Santo Domingo on April 16, 1797. They had enough stores to last for three months and orders to patrol the Mona Passage between modern-day Haiti and Puerto Rico on the lookout for enemy ships. At the time, Britain warred with both Spain and France. Most of the men on board the Hermione already served for three years with no idea of when they would leave. Throughout the 1797 cruise, Captain Pigot ruled the crew with his usual kindness and fairness. One of the last straws for the crew came when Pigot humiliated a well-liked officer named David O'Casey. Pigot tried to have O'Casey grovel on his knees in front of the entire crew for an oversight committed during his watch. However, Casey, being a gentleman, refused to be subjected to such humiliation and endured 12 lashes, the normal punishment for a sailor, but not a junior officer. Pigot later revoked O'Casey's commission, which horrified the crew not only because of its cruelty, but because it left them without a friend among the officer corps. On September 20th, 1797, a sudden squall hit the HMS Hermione. Captain Pigot called for the top sails to be reefed with a threat that the last man down would be flogged. While trying to move as quickly as possible to avoid punishment, two adolescent crewmen fell from the rigging high above the ship and died upon striking the deck. Another man perished when a crewman fell upon him as he walked the deck. Captain Pigot ignored proper funerary rites for the three men and ordered them thrown overboard, paying them the ultimate insult by calling them landlubbers. Two days went by, with the crew growing more restless and furious with how Captain Pigot treated them. On September 22nd, after drinking too much rum, an explosive situation finally erupted. About 18 men stormed the deck, armed with cutlasses, tomahawks, and bayonets. Pigot awoke to the sound of splintering wood as the mutineers smashed open his door. Leaping from his cot, Pigot snatched up a short dagger as several armed men burst in. As the men began to slash at him, Pigot desperately tried to fight them off, shouting for help, but none would come for him. Pigot landed several blows, but his attackers kept thrusting at him, taunting and jeering. Captain Pigot fled out of his cabin, his white nightshirt soaked with blood from more than a dozen wounds, and then collapsed over the barrel of a cannon. The mutineers tossed Captain Pigot overboard, mortally wounded but still alive. When word of the murder spread, other sailors seized the chance to settle scores against officers who did Captain Pigot's dirty work. 
Nine other such officers soon went overboard, only after being stabbed bloody by a roaring mob armed with bayonets and knives. The crew then took the ship to La Guira in Spanish-ruled Venezuela and turned it over to the Spaniards. Spain accepted the ship, which they rechristened the Santa Cecilia. Most of the crew served on Spanish and French ships against their home country, with a great many still serving on the rechristened HMS Hermione. Unfortunately, that also meant they fought against their former commanders. Captain Edward Hamilton of the HMS Surprise found them in October 1797 at Puerto Cabello in Venezuela. She did not prove an easy target because the HMS Hermione anchored under a land battery of 200 guns. Captain Hamilton did not achieve surprise either because as he led his boats in for the attack, two Spanish gunships spotted him. They raised an alarm, so the crew of the HMS Hermione readied for the British boats. Nevertheless, Captain Hamilton's men boarded the Hermione, and after a desperate fight, the Royal Navy cut her cable, loosed her sails, and despite fire from the Spanish land batteries, carried her out to sea. Astonishingly, this almost reckless attack did not cause the, the death of a single British sailor, though 12, including Captain Hamilton, suffered wounds. Captain Hamilton received knighthood for this fearless exploit. Of the mutineers, 24 would be executed for their crimes. Another 11 suffered lesser punishments but escaped with their lives. One went on an involuntary vacation to Australia. Captain Hamilton took the HMS Hermione back home to Great Britain, where it would be renamed the HMS Retribution. Very fitting. She served the Navy for another three years before being decommissioned and then scrapped in 1805. O'Casey, whose flogging helped spark the mutiny, would later earn back his commission and ended his days as one of the lieutenants of Greenwich Hospital. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.